it's time for another Autodesk University 2010 Special Report. Welcome to another special report from Autodesk University 2010. I'm Ralph Bond with Autodesk, and my guest in this segment is Mark Gage. He's with the Yale School of Architecture, and we're going to talk about Mudbox in their curriculum. But first, Mark, tell us a little bit about what you do for Yale. I've been on the faculty at Yale for about 10 years, and I also have a practice in New York City. And what I do at Yale is I'm kind of the guy at the school that looks for emerging technologies and more experimental ways of thinking about architectural form and introducing it to the students, using it in my office, and kind of keeping a progressive attitude towards architecture and what new forms architecture can take. Let's dive right into Mudbox. This year, for the first time, I understand you're offering a class on Autodesk Mudbox, a product that usually is thought of with the video game and computer-generated content for movies arena. Can you tell me a little bit more about the class? Yeah, absolutely. I had noticed a couple of years ago that architects are increasingly building more adventurous shapes and forms with, um, with new fabrication technologies. Right. But what we're running up against is a kind of limited amount of tools that allow us to design different things. So in standard architectural software packages, there's kind of a limited number of shapes and ways to deal with shapes. What I found a couple of years ago is that the entertainment industry with video games and movies are much more advanced in their ability to deal with form. Right. So in a movie like Lord of the Rings, they're mm -hmm. making goblins. They're making all these kind of strange creatures that no one's ever seen before. And I kind of, along with a number of other architects in my generation, kind of put two and two in together and realized that all of the really progressive experimental form-making technologies are coming out of Hollywood and video games. So. What I've tried to do is take some of those technologies and bring them into architecture to see what architects can do with them. Mudbox specifically was something I became interested in because as architects use more surface modeling tools, mm -hmm. everything we were producing looked smooth and seamless. Like we, was gonna, we have a whole generation of architects producing jelly beans. <laughs> What we tried to do with Mudbox is allow the students and some of the people in my office uh, give them the ability to produce more detailed textures, more ornamental surfaces, just more detail that doesn't just look like a kind of unfinished or glossy candy coating. Right. What Mudbox is really designed for, of course, is to do skin on Hollywood creatures. So mm -hmm. I know one of the early things that was used for it was to put wrinkles on King Kong's face, mm -hmm. for example. So what architects do typically is if we want a texture on a building, we'll you know, specify a certain type of brick or a certain type of stone. But with Mudbox, we're looking to give the architects the ability to design their own textures for their own buildings yes. that are custom made. And this isn't only for ornamental effects and to show how things look different, but we imagine that architects can use these tools to create buildings that shed wind in a better way or channel water in a better way, that there's a performative aspect to all of these new shapes and new textures that we're now just starting to get our hands in. Probably dealing with light surfaces too. In Absolutely, right? yeah, reflection. Yeah. Car manufacturers, as a matter of fact, um, I had done some work with another uh, Autodesk product, Alias Studio, which is designed for automotive surfaces, but it was interesting to see how automotive designers use surfaces to generate reflections. So when you look at a surface, the quality of the surface is determined on what is being reflected in the surface. Yes. Architects were using it very differently and just looking at the form itself. So making these alliances between different industries is allowing architecture to get a whole new perspective on how to deal with form, how to deal with the aesthetics of a building, and how to deal with it in, in other performative terms. Mark, that was a great description, and now I'd like to know, how are your students reacting to Mudbox? I think about architecture students, maybe they're experiencing Revit architecture products along those lines, but suddenly they're, you're putting Mudbox in their hands. That must be an interesting experience. How are they reacting to it? Well, one thing we try to do at Yale specifically is expose the students to as many different uh, tools to design as we can. Right. Part of that is allowing technologies other than those that are just used for architecture to be available kind of on their desktops at their computers. For them it to not really, I mean, play isn't the right word, but to experiment yes. worth is, is a better word. These students specifically in the course that's involving Mudbox that I'm teaching are unbelievably proficient. And my assistant, Cody Davis, is probably one of the best computer modeling guys that Yale has produced in the last couple of years, and he's been integral in helping to be a kind of translation between 
how they use the technology in Hollywood and how it could be used in architecture. So Cody's been really instrumental in helping to transition some of those tools and show the students how to use them and be a real resource in that way. The students themselves are, and I was just thinking about this this morning, these students are probably the first generation of students who really grew up with a computer. They were playing Nintendos. They weren't doing right. hand drawings. I think I might be the last generation of architect <laughs> that was doing running blueprints and smelling ammonia. But these guys pick up the software unbelievably quickly. So we found in our first couple experiments with Mudbox, when I gave the students the, the software in an initial assignment, they were producing things, you know, unbelievably interesting things in the first couple of weeks. The problem was that we realized that they were producing things which looked almost exactly like you would find in a Hollywood movie. Mm -hmm. So we were getting a lot of architectural panels that looked a lot like goblin skin or you know ogre warts or <laughs> dragon scales. So what we had to do was we started looking at more historic examples of textures and we had someone from Autodesk come in who's done work with Pixar and Disney mm. and showed how you can use Mudbox to kind of get out of just the basics of creating you know, crazy animal skins right. and textures. So now, towards the end of the semester, we're really starting to get some really interesting uh, surfaces that look useful for architecture and don't necessarily look like something that a Hollywood animator would use Mudbox for. So we're getting away from the kind of initial biological stuff. But the students have really, I mean, they've really, uh, they drank it up uh, far, far, <laughs> far, far more quickly than I had even imagined they would. Mark, at Autodesk University 2010, you were teaching a class about Mudbox and obviously interacting with architects here attending the university. What would be your elevator pitch message to architects out there in the world listening to this podcast? Why should they care about Mudbox? Why should they be looking at this technology? Well, I think architects need to get in a new mindset where what we do isn't just work with the architectural software, but we look for opportunities elsewhere. And I think Autodesk has done an amazing job of acquiring and working with other software manufacturers to bring a whole new wealth of tools into the software industry. So I see architects as uh, needing to change their perception from just working within singular programs mm -hmm. to looking for opportunities wherever they may be. And I've just found that I think, I've just found that Mudbox at the moment is right now meshing very well with a need in architecture, and that is a need to have access to design at a more detailed level with the more customized tools that we don't currently have in architecture, and I think Mudbox at the moment currently provides. What website can people go to to learn more about your programs? If you want more information on this, we're starting to post stuff on the Yale School of Architecture website, and that's www.architecture.yale.edu. And we're also working with this in my office, which is Gage Clemenceau Architects. That's G-A-G-E-C-L-E-M-E-N-C-E-A-U.com. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. For more podcasts and videos from Autodesk University 2010, visit autodesk.com forward slash AU Newscast. That's A U N E W S C A S T.